Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and something that I find that a lot of flat earthers struggle with, a lot, is maths. Whether it's Nathan Oakley not knowing how to convert metres to kilometres. How do you convert metres into kilometres? I don't know, how do you convert metres into kilometres? Or whether it's Anthony Riley not knowing what the interior angles of an equilateral triangle are. Let's do this again. Anthony, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are the angles? Is somebody recording this? Because this is just priceless. Well, the, the one I'm using, isn't, it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. Or even JM Truth being so adamant that 10 to the negative 17 is a negative number. Let me just say, 10 to the negative 17, guys, just to cover this again. The 18th billion time, because apparently the people in non sequester don't know how to count. 10 to the negative 17 is negative 17 10 times. Or even Nigel Cheesy Hands thinking that 1 plus 1 equals 1 because magnet. Oh, wait, he's not a flat earther. Oops. But today we're going to be talking about someone who has about as much expertise in mathematics as Nigel Cheesy Hands. I am, of course, talking about CC, otherwise known as. Chris. E equals MC squared. That's the famous equation that Einstein came up with. So it seems as though another thing that CC doesn't know how to do is make his audio not sound terrible. You can barely hear what he's trying to say because of the noise, and I managed to make it sound better. Here. E equals MC squared. That's the famous equation that Einstein came up with. See, it's still difficult to understand what he's saying because of the way that he speaks, but at least there's not a droning of noise now. But we have no definition of mass, so the equation falls apart. So there is a definition of mass, and the mass of an object is the amount of inertia it has. So an object with a lot of mass has a lot more inertia, and when you've got a lot more inertia, this means that it is a bit more difficult to accelerate it. If we take the equation force equals mass times acceleration, then rearrange it to acceleration equals force divided by mass, we can see that as the mass increases, you get a lot less acceleration. That is a rather simple definition, and it is measurable. You can measure how much mass an object has. So yes, E equals mc squared works for an object at rest. The energy is the mass times the speed of light squared. I would like to know the answer to the simple equation. And the answer to a very simple problem. 3x plus 1. A simple algebra problem that should be answered for all of us here. So what CC is talking about here is something called the Colette's Conjecture. Now the Colette's Conjecture is often called 3x plus 1, but 3x plus 1 is only part of it. Essentially what it is, is take any number x. Now if x is even, divide it by 2. If x is odd, times it by 3 and add 1. Then with the result that you get, do the same thing. The Colette's Conjecture states that with any number that you enter, you should reach 1. Now when it comes to the unsolved part, the unsolved part is, will you always reach 1? Is there a number out there that ends up not reaching a 1? Well, we don't know. If there is a number that doesn't reach 1, I can guarantee you that it's going to be a huge number. I'm talking numbers with potentially hundreds, potentially thousands, potentially millions of digits. Now, he calls it a very simple problem. However, it's not as simple as you may think. Because how do you prove that given any number, it will eventually reach 1. One option is to just calculate every number and see if it reaches 1. If you find one that doesn't reach 1, well, then you've proven it wrong. The problem with that, of course, is you may never find a number that does not reach 1. But if you don't find a number that reaches 1, that doesn't mean that you've proven it to be true. Because there are always larger numbers. Unless, of course, CC has managed to figure out what the largest number is. And knowing him, he'd probably say, look, it's infinity minus 1. To which I'd ask, well, what's infinity divided by 2? It's actually two circles. When you look at one circle, it's 360 degrees. Plus 360 degrees means infinity is 720 degrees. Nigel, I wasn't asking you, okay? So that brings us back to the question. If Colatz's conjecture is true, then how do you prove it to be true? 
You can't just calculate the sequence for every number because there will always be a larger number for you to do that for. So if you're going to prove it, you're going to have to do a lot of work trying to figure out what hasn't anybody in the world noticed about this before. Obviously that's not a very easy thing to do because a lot of people have looked at this problem. That doesn't mean that it can't be done, but you would have to look through a lot of data. Not only that, but you'd also need a team to figure out something that no one has ever noticed before. So CC, this is my challenge to you, and it's not an easy challenge, trust me. How would you prove that Collatz's conjecture is true? If you can't say how someone would prove that, then it's not that simple. Although to be fair, CC does have trouble with things that I find quite simple, such as fixing audio. So CC, if you ever have audio that needs fixing, I can do it. I will charge you a small fee though. Because the mathematicians that are out there are dealing with Einstein that have all these computations and all this bullshit that are apparently able to uh, judge the distance of stars and say that they're trillion miles away based off of his equations. Well, you see, that's actually not very difficult. All you have to do is get a few measurements and then do some trigonometry to try and figure that out. Now, sometimes there will be a bit of error, so you might have to use something a little bit more advanced. But that is far simpler than trying to prove Collatz's conjecture. Because the problem is the scientists don't look back to the other scientists about their mistake. They just run with it. So give me the answer, the solution to 3x plus 1 to all the geniuses out there. He talks about it as though it's an equation that can just simply be answered. Almost if you could figure out, yeah, well, if x is 5, then the answer is 16. Thus, I have solved it. It actually astounds me how CC, someone that probably hasn't done a whole lot of maths, can go, yeah, this must be simple. If it's so simple, then do it yourself. Why are you asking other people that do have other things to do to do it? And it's not like proving 3x plus 1 to be true or false would have any practical applications anywhere. The only area that I could see it having any application might be cybersecurity, but I'm not sure. To which Chris might say, well, what's the point of working out how far away stars are? What application might that have? To which I say, well, there's quite a few applications that it could have. Like, if we ever do get the ability to travel outside of our solar system, then it might be helpful to know how far away stars are, especially if we want to go to them. And on the more technical side, knowing how far away certain stars are might allow us to build sort of a map of what our part of the galaxy is like. Also, if it just so happens that the solar system is headed for a collision with a star, might be a good idea to know about that. Although, to be fair, if that's going to happen, then we have thousands of years to worry about that. It's not like we're going to just collide into a star tomorrow. So I will give CC some credit here because that wasn't the most egregious mathematical fail that I've seen from a flat earther. But it still shows a severe lack of understanding. Because if he had have just looked it up, he would have found that it's not as simple as he's making it out to be. Although in his world, he would be a genius who is one of the few people that have figured out that the earth is flat. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to make videos on in the future. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.